Okay, so last one I want to talk about here is solving a system of inequalities. So what you want to make sure you're doing, Caden Rose, is when you're looking up here, is again, determine what your variables are, all right? First of all, determine what the question is asking and determining what your variables are. So right now the question says, Ramir uses his spare time to write a novel and to exercise. He has budgeted 40 hours per week. He wants to exercise at least five hours per week, but no more than 12. And he, um, and he also hopes to write between 16 and 23 hours per week. All right? So what we need to do is we need to graph a system of inequalities. Be sure to create your scale. All right? So let's go ahead and write about, first of all, um, write a system of inequalities. First of all, let's write about what x, what we want our x and y's to be. So let's say we, um, let's say, what are the things we do not know? What is one thing we do not know? We don't know how many hours the x is, right? So let's just make that x. So x is the hours, hours of exercise. And what else do we not know? How many hours he writes. OK? So what are a couple things that we know now in relation to the number of hours he exercises and the hours he writes? One of them is we know that in, when you add up all those hours, it has to be what? Could it be less than 40 as well? Can it be more? No. So we can say x plus y has to be less than or equal to 40. Right? Yes? OK. Then uh, we also say that x has to be greater than 5. Guys, just let me go through this, then you guys can have it. x has to be greater than 5, but what? So you could say 5. And that's what a lot of you guys wrote it down as. Um, but that's not something that we've learned how to graph as far as on a x, y graph, have we? We knew how to graph this when we were doing like just a line. But since we're dealing now with uh, linear equations, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write this as x has to be greater than or equal to 5, and x has to be less than or equal to 12. Because can we graph a line x equals 5 or x equals 12 or x equals 12? That's going to be your vertical line, right? So we can actually graph that on a curve. There's nothing wrong with this, but as far as the graphing goes, we're going to leave it like that. Um, then y has to be what? So y has to be greater than or equal to 16, but less than or equal to 23. Right? All right, so again, same thing. I'll say, for this one, I'll say um, y has to be greater than or equal to 16, and y has to be less than or equal to 23. All right, so there's our system of inequalities. Is it a system? Is, does it have more than two or more inequalities? Yeah, so it is a system. Now, the main important thing it says is um, graph the system of inequalities, Berkshire. Be sure to create your own scale. So I am just going to have x be the hours of exercise. And I'm going to have y be the hours of writing. Since one does not depend on the other, it's not going to change either on your graph. So we can, uh, it really is kind of arbitrary decision. Yes? Remember, I'm it doesn't, like, I, yes, you can change it. It's not one of my variables depend on the other variable. So we're not dealing with our regular x, y coordinate, OK? So we're just graphing these, how they relate to each other, but not one is dependent on the other. So let's go ahead and graph each one of these. So if I was going to, um, and actually, you know what, it might be just for simplicity purposes. Sorry, I will change it. Hours of writing.
I don't need to confuse you anymore. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this first one. So this is going to go up to 40. Well, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So I could go um, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Okay, so let's go by fives here. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So I'll go by like 2.5s. So if to graph this, I could have y is less than or equal to 40 minus x. So I'd go up to 40. And I guess then here, I'm going to have to go by fives. So this would be 5, 10, 15, 20. So here, if I go down x to x, I'm going, my slope is down one, down one over one, right? My slope is negative x. Negative one is my slope. So that means down one over one. So you could also go down five over five, right? Yes? You guys follow that? Because I'm just hearing you. Okay. 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 A little bit rough on my graph. But there we go. Then we need to go and test our shading. So we go ahead and test our point. Can we use 0, 0 on this? Yeah. And that is going to be true. So I'm going to shade all the area right there. OK? How do I know what? You got to use your test point for anything. Then now we just need to, yes? I, re I solved it for y. So y is less than or equal to 40 minus x. So I went up to 40 as my y-intercept. You could also write it like this. That might make more sense. I went up to 40, then I went down one over one. Um, so now, ladies and gentlemen, I need to graph the rest of these. So I graph x is greater than or equal to 5. Well, remember, that's a vertical line. So I go over 5, and I graph that line. So it means all numbers that are going to be greater than or equal to 5. You plug in 0, it's going to be false. So I'm going to shade all lines this way. Then the next one is x is greater than or equal to 12. So I go to 12, which will be roughly around there. But it says all values that are less than 12. So it's going to be all values this way. OK? Then has y has to be greater than 16. That's a horizontal line. And it's all values greater than. So it's going to be values going up this way. Where are you lost at? How am I graphing each one? Do you remember how to graph x, equals gr x is greater than or equal to 5? That's going to be a vertical line. So I went over to 5, and I graphed the vertical line. It says the values that are greater than 5. You can use your test point 0, which you know is true. I'm sorry, all values which would be false. So therefore, I shade all my values to the right. Then I graphed x is 12. So I went over to 12, and I graphed the vertical line at 12. But it said all values that are less than 12. So then I started shading to the left. Yeah, until it stops really at the 5 to satisfy both of those. Then I go to y is greater than 16. So I, now that's a horizontal line. So I went up to 16, and I graphed my line. And that's all the values that are above 16, right? And now I need to go to y is 23, which is a horizontal line right here. And then that's all the values that are less than that. So the only region that satisfies every single inequality that's the only equation that satisfies all of them. Now, if you want to be less sloppy with this, a way sometimes I like to do it is just draw the arrows. A lot of times I just like to draw arrows on where I should shade. And then that tells me, oh, OK. You just take a look at all the lines, and you'd figure out that's where you have to shade. Okay? But I showed kind of the shading so you guys could see, oh, 
The only intersection where they all intersect is right there. So what does, what does this mean then? It means as long as he exercises between 5 and 10 and, and writes between the 16 and 23, it's going to be in this, in this area, it will be under that amount. All right? So what? 